brown feathers, bright yellow eyes, and the wisdom to hide in plain sight. Today, I'm out to see the burrowing owls. Christiana, hi. Nice hi. to see you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I have to tell you, I'm a little thrown. When, when I knew that we were gonna be looking at owls, I was thinking something more of a forest, but this is, this is the desert. They really live out here? Mm-hmm, they love these open areas. Christiana Manville, a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, works to create a habitat for the owls that call Floyd Lamb Park home. How many are out there? Uh, we have 15 pairs in the park. All right. Um, and we had a really good year last year. They had 42 young uh, that fledged. Listed as an endangered species, only 10,000 breeding pairs of the western burrowing owl remain in existence. After mating, the female stays in the burrow. The male goes out and gets food, etc., And brings it to her. The birds eat small mammals, reptiles, and insects, and thrive in open areas with low ground cover like the desert and prairies. And are they nocturnal? Do they come out and check things out at night? Yeah, they're nocturnal. Um, their most active uh, sunrise, sunset is when they're most easily seen. Uh, and besides mankind, what's their other biggest threat? Their biggest threats are predators in the air, so they're other hawks. And there are actually quite a few at the park. <laughs> so they're always looking up, looking for their predators. How available are homes for them if you don't make them? Well. If you look around, you see all these houses. Um, once there gets to be a lot of development, there are no more desert tortoises. So the desert tortoises are what's digging, creating homes for them. When they have no other animals creating homes, that they need places to live. Uh, the burrow is what's limiting their population. Do we know that there's anybody home? Let's go and look and see if there's owl sign at the burrow. To help the birds displaced by urban sprawl, Christiana and many volunteers build artificial burrows from plastic and concrete. So this is one of the artificial burrows. Yeah, so we have, we have three burrows here. It's sort of like uh, rooms in a house. So we, we install them in clusters. So they can cache food in one burrow. They can have their, their eggs in another burrow. Oh, they do that? Yeah, and so let's look for some owl sign. And that will let us know if the owls are using the burrow. You want these, John? What is this? These are bones, yeah, mouse bones. bones. These are mouse bones? Yep. It means someone's been here. Um, you can't tell how old. This could be quite old. We really want to look for owl pellets because those are recent. How successful are the artificial habitats as opposed to the natural? Well, so we started this project in 2010 and we only had four pairs in the park. And then as we put in more artificial burrows, now we have 15. That's got to be very satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular species. People really are drawn to this owl. Once you see them with their big yellow eyes and they're very expressive with their eyebrows, you know, the and they're tons of people around us in Las Vegas. You know, we're very close to everything. And so people like getting involved and getting to know nature. The burrowing owl is one of the smallest owls in North America. They nest in the spring and females lay up to a dozen eggs called a clutch. What's the average size family? If this works and, and eggs hatch, how many can you expect? Well, in the Mojave Desert, we don't have as much food as other parts of the country. So here, an average size in a good year is five. We've had, in a dry year where there was no rain, we've had as little as two. And, and a lot of burrows didn't have any chicks. This seems like it would be kind of attractive to a snake or maybe another kind of critter. Do you, do you get that problem and what do you do? Predation is a huge problem. That's why we have these cement blocks. It's to keep like coyotes from digging up the burrow. Out here, have the artificial burrows superseded the natural burrows? Yes, we have uh, more artificial burrows now. And uh, do you want to see how we put one together? Because apparently it's very important, so I'd like to know. Yeah, let's go take a look. The volunteers constructed multiple burrows for the owls. And with a little help from their friends, the birds are moving into the subterranean dens. So this is an irrigation box. And uh, we've drilled a hole in the side, and we've closed up this hole. All right, let me take a, take a look. There's the one that you closed up because I know you're going to tell me this is important. And I bet that's going to be the front door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. OK, so then what? And it's the jumbo size, because we like these owls. We want them to be happy. We flip it over, and we bury it. And then, so this has three feet from the bottom. 
you know, so the dirt would be around up here. And then we connect this irrigation pipe. And it's really important that you have one that has slots on it. And then we have a slope coming up, a tunnel that we put the piping in. And then the final piece is the cement block. Okay. That the entrance, and this is to keep predators from harming the pipe. And then you're set, all you have to do is bury it. Right, so we have this bend in it here. So you bury it like that? Yeah, and so that way there's no light that's going down directly. They don't like that either? No, and, and it's harder for a predator to go in and do a bend than a straight shot. You know, it must be incredibly satisfying to see numbers go up mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, it, it is. Can you have too many habit, artificial habitats? Well, that's why we're not putting any more in. You know, there's something called carrying capacity. So for the owls, it's how, many, how much food there is. If we create too many homes, there won't be enough food for everyone. So we're gonna stop at, at the 17 burrows in the park. At sunset, the owls emerge from their homes in search of prey, and all the conservation efforts pay off. It's fantastic. You can see them, they're just sort of surveying the field, and getting ready to go hunting. It's great. You know, if it weren't for you ladies, we really wouldn't be able to come out here and enjoy these owls, and we probably wouldn't know everything that we do know about them. So all the hard work and the housing that you're providing for them, just on behalf of everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. It really goes a long way. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks.